everybody. It's great to see you here today for the 10 to 14 year old lesson. This lesson is going to be about not only the science behind the COVID vaccine, but the woman behind the science of the COVID vaccine, which is that much more special. Um, I'm Dr. Debbie and I am a veterinarian. Who can tell me what a vet is? What's a veterinarian? Any takers? Darren, uh, yeah. Someone which uh, treats um, all kinds of animals. You got it, all kinds of animals. So my smallest patient was like this small old dwarf hamster. Super cute, super cute. And then my largest patient was way bigger than me. What do you think it was? Like a big snake or like? Whoa, bigger. Bigger? <laughs> yeah, bigger. Oh my gosh. An Asian elephant. Right? Yeah. So veterinarians can treat a lot of different things, but just not us, right? We can't like prescribe you medication because you're not in our wheelhouse. Okay, Erin, do you want to introduce yourself and Bima? Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you all here today. I know it's really early for a few of you and also really late for also a few of you. So thank you so much for being here. My name is Erin. I'm from Indonesia, but I'm currently studying in Canada. I'm studying animal biology, and I'm also hoping to become a veterinarian. Okay. So hello, everyone. I am Bima, and I'm calling in from Nepal. I am also a veterinarian, and I am currently involved as a senior promotion intern at One Head Lesson. And it's lovely to see you all here and have that beautiful pet names. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So, you know, you don't need to be a veterinarian or you don't even have to be interested in veterinary medicine to enjoy this particular lesson because this lesson affects the whole world. And this is why we have people from the U.S., people from Hong Kong, people from Indonesia and beyond um, joining today. So really excited. Let me reclaim the host status and start to screen share and we'll get started. Here we go. Okay, everybody can see my, my screen, thumbs up. Yes, perfect. Keep in mind, I can't see everybody, so I'm leaving it up to Aaron to help call on me, uh, call for me. Um, the other thing is, I just wanna know, um, on the count of three, say yes, me, if, like unmute yourself, if you are a curious person, one, Two, three. Yes. yes, me. Okay, cool. So I heard a few people say that. So if you're a curious person, you're going to be a fantastic scientist. Okay, keep that in mind. The only thing that you need to be a fantastic scientist is really curiosity. And that's what I've seen over and over and over again, not only when I was studying in school, but also in my professional career. Um, so keep that curiosity alive, okay? Okay, the story behind the COVID vaccine. Okay, there's gonna be a contest at the end of this. And so we recommend you at this point to start to take notes. The reason why we have our animal names after, the, after everybody's first name is because that's the team name, okay? Bima, if you can keep track of how many points go to how, uh, what team, that would be great. And even though there's a full-blown contest at the very end, we're gonna be keeping track of points throughout the lesson. And Aaron will be calling on people and Bima will be collecting the points. Okay, in the last lesson, we reviewed five different vocabulary words, one health, species, zoonotic disease, mutation, and vaccine. Okay, so for the first um, point, who can tell me the what the One Health concept was? It was discussed last time for one point. What is the One Health? What what? How was One Health described last time? Katie, um, isn't it all about like animal health, environmental health, and human health? Nice. Yeah. Exactly. Way to go, Katie. 
So yeah, it's that connection between everything, right? A sick environment can cause sick people. It makes sense. Sick animals can cause sick people. Sick people can cause sick animals. And it goes round and round and round. Now, the One Health approach, we're stepping this up another notch. The One Health approach is teamwork. It's people of different backgrounds, strengths, disciplines. We come from different backgrounds and we prevent and solve health problems. So what is that one word to describe the One Health approach? It's teamwork. And I'm gonna be asking you this later on. So feel free to write a note to remind yourself. Um, remember last time we were saying mutation means something. And there was one word to describe mutation in the simplest sense. What was that one word for two points? What was that one word to describe a mutation? Katie? Change. Change, perfect. So change can be good, change can be bad. Change can strengthen something, change can weaken something, or it can just change something and not change the strength. So keep that in mind because that has to do with viruses, with bacteria, with anything else on this planet. Okay, so something that might be interesting to remember is that a whole lot of things get vaccines. And who can tell me from the last class, what's a vaccine? Like what's the most basic definition of a vaccine or what's the purpose of a vaccine? Katie. Whoa. Um, a vaccine um, helps introduce your body to a virus so that it can record the virus so that the next time you get that virus, you don't get sick. Yeah, it could be with a virus, it could be with a bacteria, it could be with a lot of other things. Um, so exactly, it's meant to strengthen the immune system and we'll talk about the immune system soon. These are the words we're gonna be talking about today. The immune system, protein, mRNA. Does anybody know what the M stands for? I would be so surprised if you did. It's okay if you don't. It's messenger RNA, messenger, and translation. And translation doesn't mean like uh, English to Spanish. No, <laughs> we're talking about translation in the biology sense. But first, let's familiarize ourselves with this wonderful individual. She's the woman behind the science behind the messenger RNA, mRNA vaccine. So Dr. Carrico, she comes from Eastern Europe in Hungary. And back in the 1970s, so this was a long time ago, guys, 1970s, way before you were born, she was studying biology. And then she became a biochemist in graduate school. So what does that mean? So after high school, after secondary school, um, she studied for several years about in her bachelor's degree, um, biology. Does anybody know what biology is? Who can explain what that is? It's okay with total guesses. It's totally fine. Maybe. Is it the study of like plants or living things? Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep it broad. Study of living things. Perfect. Um, and then biochemist. What on earth is a biochemist? How about Darren? Oh, um, is it someone that specializes in both biology and chemistry? Or is it kind of like the connection like, between two? Yeah, it's where it merges. It's like the biology, so the study of living things, but the chemistry that makes it like function the way it should, makes the living thing function the way it should. It gets into like the nitty gritty, a very, very small um, biological areas um, but it can be used in all sorts of ways around the world. Uh, we'll talk about that shortly. But tell me, in your opinion, and there's no wrong answer, there's no right answer, what is an important characteristic for a successful scientist or engineer? This could be for two points. Yuki? Determination. I couldn't hear you, sorry. Determination. Determination. Awesome. I love it. Anybody else for one point since Yuki called it first? Katie looks unsure, but I think she has an answer. 
Um, maybe creativity. Creativity, yeah. I like both answers. Let's see how Dr. Carrico actually answers the question of really what makes her team, her biochemistry team at her workplace so successful. Team. I have a team at the biotech to be, you know, curious and not walk like, oh, this is always like that. But why is that? You know, that kind of thing. So, so I was, um, yeah, curious and, um, and, uh, and I had very good uh, teachers in, in Hungary. So what did she say? What was the one word that kept coming over and over again? Y Yuki? She was curious. Yeah, she was curious. Pretty cool. It sounds kind of like what I was saying before, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what is the immune system? And another question for you is, is the immune system something that you can see like in the world? Or is it something more inside of something? And another question for you is, is there immune system in a person and an animal and a plant? Like what's going on? Anybody, can you help me? Katie? Um, I think immune systems are in both, are in, plants, animals, and humans, I believe, because humans need an immune system to um, stop a virus or a bad bacteria or really anything else. And it's practically the same thing with animals. And when something like, if um, plants need to be able to defend themselves, so I think like an immune system would help if something like something was like trying to eat them or like there was something bad going on. If it like a tree got sick, something would need to happen. It has to have some type of defense, right? Now yeah. I don't know for sure if in a plant it's called technically an immune system, but think of it kind of in the same way. So what is the immune system is really the part of a body that fights anything out of the ordinary. So you get a cut, okay? And then germs come into the cut. The body is like, whoa. Those germs are weird. Those germs are foreign. Those germs are not normal. We have to attack, attack, attack and protect ourselves. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, okay. So the immune system, it's not something that you can really see per se with your own eye. You have to look with the microscope. You have to look at the blood. You have to look at a lot of different parts of the body. And so in this, um, picture is a picture of a slide, like a glass slide that has cells on it. And the only way we could take this photo, this is from my own actually patient, uh, a cat, but what we do is we uh, put the slide in these different stains because they're white blood cells. They are really, really, really hard to see if you don't stain them. And then you look under the microscope and you see and this is actually a type of white blood cell over and over and over again. It's called a lymphocyte. You don't need to remember that. But this is what's really important for uh, human doctors, nurses, veterinarians, technicians, anybody who works in the hospital of any species, they need to know how to look at white blood cells because white blood cells are the things in the body that are really helping defend your body. Okay, now it's your turn. How did I describe the immune system? Who can tell me for three points? How do I describe the immune system? Yuki? It's a part of, a, it's a part of the body that fights anything out of the ordinary. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna try to find things that are out of the ordinary, but it's gonna be timed, okay? I need you to look at the left picture and then the right picture of the next slide. You got 10 seconds and then use the chat box and Erin will read out the chat box when she sees things pop up. Um, but tell me at least three differences. You get one point for each difference. Ready, set, go.
Okay, 10 seconds are up. Aaron, you said you... music note. Okay, one point for music notes. Perfect. Anybody else? The left one was normal. What are the changes in the Alia right? said the position of the spider. Nice job, Alia. Perfect. One point for her. Anything else? Do you want the answers? Or should I give you five more seconds? Two, three, four. Position Bye. of the sun from Darren and Adrena says lines in the sunshine. Nice. Whoa, you guys are good. You are good. Exactly. Okay. So one other thing that we missed is look at the amount of grass seen here versus here on the far right, on the right of the spider. Okay. Good job. You did a good job trying to find the differences. So you were acting like the immune system. Okay. You got 10 seconds. What's the difference? Ten seconds are up. I'll give you five more seconds, and I'm telling you, one. This is five points, guys. Okay. Katie Next. actually has an answer. The green part it? of the key is no longer on the right. And Darren also said second piece from the top. Ooh. Okay, Bima, how should we do these points? What's fair? I feel like it was after the buzzer, or maybe Katie hit the <laughs> hit the button right at the buzzer. How should we do this, Bima? Maybe three to Katie and two to Darren. Okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> That, that works out well. Okay, Katie, you are correct. It is this little itty bitty bit here that was different. Now remember this, if a key changes, remember we said mutation equals change, change equals mutation. If a key changes, does it still open the door? It can not open the door or it can open all the doors. It can become a master key. <laughs> so remember that, right? A, a mutation can strengthen something, it can weaken something or it can just change something. We're gonna talk about this soon. Now let's check your memory. The immune system has memory. That's the whole point of vaccines. The vaccine like prep prepares the immune system to be on the lookout for something special, something out of the ordinary and then if the germ comes, the virus or bacteria or whatever it is, comes to the body in real life, then the body is like, whoa, we already know you're out of the ordinary. We already know that you're foreign. We are going to defend ourselves. So my question to you, since you are all acting as the immune system, let's check your memory for three points. Ready for this? What is the one, either One Health concept as last week or the One Health approach? Aaron, who should we choose? I don't know. I think Katie had her hand up first. Really? Ooh, she's fast. Okay. Um, the One Health concept is environmental health, animal health, and human health. Nice. And for three points, you can tell me the One Health approach. Darren? Um, the collaboration between pe different people that specialize in different uh, I guess like aspects of health. So like um, veterinary and uh, human health, so like doctors and environmental health specialists. Amazing, yeah, it's teamwork, right? It's teamwork between people of all different backgrounds and we prevent and solve health problems. For four points, name two changes from the very first find the differences activity. Yuki? The music note and the spider. Nice. Okay. Okay. Last question for this slide. Ready for this? For how many points should we do this, Aaron? Five points? Okay. For five points. What is the, ooh, this is from the last lesson. What is the difference between a vaccine and a medication? 
Erin? Um, there's two hands up at the same time. Who was first? Um, I think Darren was first. Okay, go for it, Darren. And so a vaccine helps you rem like helps the immune system remember what the uh, like um, or know about like what viruses are like. Um, I guess like out of place or like what things are like foreign. And medications helps uh, treat those viruses or yeah. That's nice. The yeah, nice work. So a vaccine is given before somebody meets that germ, and then a medication is given after somebody's already sick from the germ. Okay, cool. Nice job. Uh, Bima, can we get a count of how many points to whom? Okay, I guess she's tabulating. Let's move on. What is a protein? A protein is something really, really, really small. It's on a cell or it's on a virus or it's even inside a cell or virus and it has a function, okay? So <clears throat> proteins can help, uh, proteins can make up muscle. And that's why people say if you eat meat, um, then you get protein is because protein is all throughout muscle. Um, or a, a protein can signal a message to another, another cell, for instance, okay? So just remember, proteins are really, really small and they have a function. So you might have heard about something on the outside of the virus called a spike protein. Raise your hand if you've heard of a spike protein. Yeah, it's in the news. Um, so a spike protein is outside of the novel coronavirus, otherwise known as SARS-CoV-2. And this is a big deal for a lot of researchers, a lot of biochemists, because this spike protein acts like a key. That key opens up doors, opens up doors of cells. So think of it like this. The virus comes around, finds a cell of a human or of an animal, and then it, it puts the key in the lock and it opens the door and it enters the cell. Okay, now truly there's no actually door or there's no actual key, but think of it like this, okay? We're talking about models here. So different examples of proteins can be, feel free to write these down, hint, hint, hint. Examples could be antibodies. Antibodies come from the body. Um, antigens, just a heads up, antigens come from the foreign substance, okay? Comes from the invader. Collagen, collagen's like in your earlobe, it's in your nose, spike protein of this virus. So they all have functions, okay? So you may or may not remember this, but um, in the last lesson, we were talking about the outside of the cell is responsible for getting, excuse me, the outside of the virus with these little spikes is what's responsible for getting into a human cell or an animal cell. The inside of the virus is responsible for the amount of um, copies it can make of itself once it is inside of a human uh, cell or an animal cell. Okay, so it's really, we're talking about how a virus can enter into a cell. And the way they can do it is with the spike protein. Okay, everybody good on that part because it comes up over and over again. Cool. Okay. What is messenger RNA, mRNA? Let's keep it really simple. Messenger RNA is the instructions to create a protein. So I don't know if any of you have done paint by number before. Raise your hand if you've done paint by number. Yeah, Katie, can you describe what a paint by number is? So pretty much there's just one big picture, like an outline, it's all in black and white. And if you zoom in a little, there's little squares that have numbers on them and each number stands for a color. So you grab that color, and you draw it in, and in the end, you have a beautiful picture. Okay, hopefully beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So look at this. We all remember this. Remember, we're testing our memory here. So we all remember this picture. It started off as a paint by number. So as you can see, number one correlates to brown. Uh, tell me, everybody, what does number five, just sh shout it out. What does number five uh, equal? if we're following these directions. Light green. Light green, perfect. And then number four down here. Okay. 
Anybody? Black. Black. Perfect. Thank you. You see what happened? So Darren looked at number five. And number five is here. It's light green. Then Katie looked at number four and then goes over here and sees, okay, four means black. Okay. So we're following the instructions. Ultimately, in the end, once we're coloring in this picture and we're working through the process of building something like a beautiful picture, that process is called translation. So you see instructions and then you build something called a protein and that process is called translation. Now, what's the function of this beautiful picture? Well, that could be to make you feel more calm <laughs> or it could tell a story or whatever, but this picture has a function in this situation, okay? So question for you, what is mRNA? How did I describe mRNA for three points? Yuki? Instruction to create a protein. Perfect. Uh, for four points, what is a protein? Yuki? Um, a small structure inside of or on a cell or virus that helps the cell or virus function. Way to go. Awesome. And translation in biology means what? For two points. Because we're on the slide. Darren? I'm using the instructions given by the mRNA to create a protein. Wow, you guys are all rock stars. Awesome. Okay, instructions are not always clear in the body. It's when they're not clear, there could be miscommunication, there could be a mutation, there could be a change and something develops unexpectedly. Right now we're gonna use a, a little practice model and we are going to work through translation. I'm going to be giving you instructions. I'm going to be giving you um, instructions like mRNA, okay? Then we're going to try to build a quote unquote protein together. Um, I need one volunteer to do this after me. Who wants to volunteer for six points? Darren. Okay, Darren, awesome, six points. Okay, remember that mutations can happen when there are changes in the instructions or say the misinterpretation. So this, this is called copycat. Again, I explain changes um, I'm going to be describing something and I want you to imitate me. And then at the end, we're going to all show our products. So I want everybody to put both of their hands together, palm against palm. And don't show me. I don't want to see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, hide it. Okay. Now I'm going to put my right fifth finger. I'm going to extend my right fifth finger and I'm going to bend my left thumb. And then I'm going to have the tips of my second finger touch each other. And this, oh, this is hard. Okay, and this is what I got. What did you all get? <laughs> Darren, what happened to your other fingers? Okay, 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 I see a few mutations. That happens sometimes. Darren, do you want to try? Um, sure. So, um, let's have your hands together. We should, we should not see you. Hide, hide your hands. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, hide both of your middle fingers. Okay. Um, and then cross your right first uh, index finger. Um, and um, hide your left thumb. Uh, yeah, I'm finished. Okay, this is what I got. Okay, I see a lot of vari variations. I see a lot of mutations. Um, and that's just an example of, you know, maybe this mutation is beneficial. Maybe the mutation is not beneficial. 
So you see, sometimes these things happen in nature too. But here's the thing, Dr. Carrico, going back to her, she saw the power of messenger RNA. So question for you, what do proteins do for six points? Okay, so I'll answer this then. Proteins have a function, okay? Proteins can uh, be used to send, have single uh, signals, signals sending messages from one place to another in the body. It could be, uh, they could be used to unlock, uh, you know, quote unquote locks or doors in the body, you know, like the spike protein, um, or they could be used to help build the structure of cells. So lots of different things. They have a function. What is mRNA? For two points, what is mRNA? Yuki. Instructions to create protein. Bingo, awesome. Okay, so Dr. Carrico saw that if you focus on messenger RNA, on mRNA, and you have the ability to change a protein, and a protein has a function. Again, proteins have uh, sense signals, like they, they could be messengers between different cells. Um, they can uh, build the structure of a cell. They can do lots of things. If you hold the power of developing a protein in the body, that's a lot of power. So since um, for the last like 50 years, okay, since the 1970s, she wanted to do more and more and more research for mRNA. But the problem is that nobody was giving her grants. She was rejected after rejected. And then in research, what happens um, if you are not at the very top of the research lab, then you are at the mercy of, um, of the fate of your boss. So we'll say if your boss leaves, then you're kind of, you're not very uh, stable in your job. And so that's what happened with her. Her boss left and then she was demoted. So instead of promotion, she was demoted because she could not find the money to fund her research. That's very frustrating. And this happened for 50 years, guys. This happened for a very long time. But she didn't give up. And because she didn't give up, because of that determination, like one of you said earlier, and creativity, that determination was necessary to build that amount of research that she had done and because of that, we were able, we as in the world was able to build the mRNA vaccine very quickly. So she imagined how the mRNA could change lives. Why would scientists wanna focus on mRNA? I just answered it because you get the power of changing proteins. Okay, so this is what happened. One day, does anybody know what machine this is? Yuki? Printer. <laughs> yeah, a photocopier or a printer. Okay, good. Good. I want to make sure I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. So one day she goes, uh, she's at a university, okay, where she's teaching or where she's doing her research. And at this point, she is quite frustrated because she was rejected by so many different opportunities and people and people were making fun of her. And, you know, it's really hard to continue with something that you believe in if nobody else believes in you, right? It's really hard. And so one day she's at this university and she walks into this code, uh, photocopy machine room and she introduces herself to a stranger, um, to um, another man who works at the university. So adult to adult, right? Don't talk to strangers. If, if you are a child, don't do it, not safe. But yeah, so she was talking with um, somebody who she just met and she said, hi, I'm uh, Catalina Carrico, I'm Dr. Carrico. And she also was talking about her passion for messenger RNA, for mRNA. And he listened to her and he agreed that what she was doing was important. So from there, 
over time, they ended up leaving the university and starting their own company. This mRNA research has been used to fight cancer, like melanoma. Melanoma is a type of cancer typically of the skin, can happen in other places, but it can happen in people and animals. It can be seen as a new option for medication. It can create new types of medication. This is like mind blowing guys, this is huge. And it can be used to create vaccines. So let's talk about that a little bit. Why would a scientist want to focus on the spike protein of the novel coronavirus for eight points? Darren. Because the proteins were the, um, as your analogy, they were kind of the key which unlocked them to allow, to, um, allow them to use the cell's functions to, um, I guess, like uh, reproduce and also create more of itself and spread yeah. the virus. Yeah, awesome job, Darren. Wow, those are a lot of points just given to you. Well done there. <laughs> so yeah, the spike protein is really necessary to get into the cells. So if the body is on the lookout for that key, for that spike protein, then it should, um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but what happens is that the body tries to um, find these keys, find these spike proteins, and then attack them so that it decreases the amount in the bloodstream, okay, and in the body, but it also binds to the protein. So even if it tries to get into a cell, it can't because it's already, it's like already locked. Like it's, so here's the key. It's already like, bam, you can't, you can't access a cell. Does that make sense? The other reason why scientists wanted to focus on the spike protein at the start is because the theory was that because we're talking about the key and the only way a virus can replicate it, replicate means make more of itself is by entering into a cell. So if we prevent, if, if we target the part that makes this virus enter into a cell, then it's not, it's probably not going to mutate so much because we want the key to work all the time, right? But nature is nature and we'll talk about that soon. So the mRNA vaccine, it does not create a whole new virus. What it only does is this little itty, itty, itty bitty bit of the messenger RNA is in this vaccine. It goes into the body and it makes the body produce only these spike proteins. So why is that important? Because if you build, if you build like a whole new, uh, if you build a whole new uh, coronavirus type vaccine that's similar to the troublesome, uh, excuse me, coronavirus, um, the virus itself that has been troublesome for this long, then you're going to cause, you know, prolonged illness and disease. You don't want that, but you do want the body to recognize this little tiny bit on the outside of the vaccine because it makes the uh, body aware of what's foreign. Plus it doesn't make the person or animal that sick. That's the whole point of it. But there are other types of vaccines out there for a coronavirus, uh, for particularly the SARS-CoV-2 virus for COVID-19. And this is important to realize. A lot of people just think about the science and the development of the vaccine, but a lot of people don't remember you have to bring this vaccine out to billions of people. And billions of people don't live in the same environment, right? So in this situation, they they use a different type of virus that's benign. Benign means it's harmless. It's not a big deal. Like the body doesn't care about it. Um, but they use this virus and it's double-stranded. Double-stranded, It's um, it means that it's a lot more stable in heat. Um, and certainly in certain areas of the planet, it gets hot. Okay, and you can't transport, you can't bring a virus, uh, excuse me, you cannot bring a vaccine in very, very, very cold conditions in the middle of the desert, for instance. It's very complicated to do that. 
So the other option for this um, vaccine is to change a single portion of this strand to make the vaccine then ultimately create mRNA. Don't get lost in the details here. The important thing is the original messenger RNA vaccine just starts from this step. In the body, the adenovirus vaccine, the other type of vaccine, that's more stable in warmer conditions. So meaning when I say stable, do you know what I mean by that? It doesn't, it doesn't get destroyed, right? It survives in warmer conditions and it works just as well in warmer conditions. Um, this other type of vaccine, what it ultimately does, it just takes one, two, three, four more steps than the mRNA vaccine. But the key is both of these types of vaccines, they focus ultimately on creating mRNA. Tell me everybody, what do you think this mRNA is meant to create through translation? Yuki. Proteins. Yeah, exactly. What type of protein? Darren? Um, is it proteins which uh, help, um, I guess, like, uh, how do I say this? Like, um, remove the uh, spikes of the coronavirus? So, so close, yeah. so close, so close. Okay. so. Almost there, guys, almost there. The mRNA that's focused for these vaccines, okay? They're meant to build the spike protein. Why? Why do we want the vaccine to build the spike protein? Yeah, Darren? So that the body knows that, um, that it's supposed to, uh, I guess, like defend against the spike protein and also kind of simulate what the uh, COVID-19 virus would be like, so that it could prevent it from, um, I guess like, uh, well, so that the um, immune system can fit back. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Everybody okay on that front? Should we go over it? Okay, um, awesome. Now keep in mind, mutations happen. Mutation equals change, change equals mutation. This can happen over time. We're gonna talk about that later on. But what's the goal of vaccines? It's really to strengthen the immune system. So will, will vaccines alone stop the pandemic? No. Why? What more do we need to do? Any guesses? That's fine to guess. Yuki. Like isolation, not like isolation, but like um, make sure you don't go out and expose yourself to too many people. Good, good. We need to stop the virus from replicating in new people. Now we're gonna go over a video soon because ultimately this video shows or explains that, and I mentioned this before, and I might mention this again, hint, 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 but the only way a virus can replicate, and what does replicate mean? Katie. To like multiply, make copies of itself. Perfect, yeah. So the only way a virus can replicate, this virus can replicate, is by being inside of a human cell or an animal cell. So how do we stop it from getting into that cell? We have a vaccine. How do we stop it from getting into the body? Well, we'll talk about that soon. So the other thing is, you're not gonna mutate if you're not replicating, if you're not making more copies of itself. Do you remember when we were doing that um, translation exercise? Do you remember how many mutations there were? <laughs> Darren, yeah, I'm sorry. Both you and I, we were not very good at this, <laughs> but that's okay because we're all learning. <laughs> but you saw there were a lot of mutations. Okay, check out this video and let's discuss it after. Else. Mutations are random errors. But the longer a virus is around and the more people it infects, the more it will change. And the more those changes accumulate, 
the more chances the virus has to evolve into something more dangerous. These four variants, considered variants of concern by the World Health Organization, all have mutations on the spike protein. Delta, the most recent addition to this list, has been referred to as a double mutant because while it has many different mutations, it has two significant ones we've seen before. This mutation seems to make the virus more transmissible. And a version of this one, found in two other variants, makes it easier for the virus to reinfect people who have already had COVID-19. Meaning these two mutations may have evolved to dodge our natural immune response. Fortunately, the immune response we get from vaccines is much stronger than our body's natural immune response. So while we may see areas that make our vaccines somewhat less effective, most experts think it's unlikely one will emerge that completely evades our vaccines. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. If you give the virus enough time and replicative cycles, it will sample a very large evolutionary space and find a solution to the problem we've presented it, which is vaccination and widespread immunity. But even if SARS-CoV-2 doesn't get to that point, as long as the pandemic continues, and as long as the virus continues to spread, it will continue to make copies of itself. So if we want to stop the variants, we need to stop the virus. Okay, question for you. If you get a vaccine, does that put like a shield around you so that you become invincible to the virus? No. What does it do? Katie. Um, all the vaccine does is that when the virus does get into your body, um, your immune system already knows how to defend itself against this virus so you don't get sick. Or maybe yeah. you just get a little sick. It's not very. Um... You're not ending up in the hospital. Hopefully. Yeah, no, it's very yeah. mild. Yeah, exactly. Mild compared. Okay, so a question for all of you. If I get vaccinated and my friend's not vaccinated and we walk through this contaminated room full of the virus, okay, are we both going to come up positive likely on, an, on, a, on a test? Or are we, or am I going to come back negative or what's going to happen? And we're not wearing masks and we're not wearing anything like that. What happens? It's okay if you're not sure. Yeah, let's figure okay. this out. Well, like there's a possibility that both of you would get the virus, but, um, the person who doesn't have the vaccine will um, more likely get infected than the person who does have the vaccine because so close so close yeah okay okay awesome yuki i really like where you're going with this so yeah chances are the vaccinated person and the unvaccinated person they're both infected that means they both get the vaccine they both get the virus into them okay so they both test positive but the difference, like what Katie was saying, is that the unvaccinated person will more likely end up in the hospital and more likely will die. Whereas the person who is vaccinated will maybe get a little bit sick, but will not hopefully end up in the hospital. Okay, moving on. How can we stop the virus from getting into our bodies for five points? Katie. Um, so you can cover your nose and mouth with like a mask or like, uh, something just to, you have to like wash your hands often, sanitize them and don't share like food or drink with other people. Yeah. And how everybody demonstrate for me, how do you sneeze? If you're going to have to sneeze into the elbow. Awesome. And then what happens if you chew and then you cross your arms? What do you do? Darren? And then you're infecting your other hand, which makes it kind of useless. <laughs> so then what do you do? Katie. Wash your hands. For how long? 20 seconds. With just water? No, with soap. Yeah. 
Awesome. Okay, so yeah, this is where One Health comes in, right? We have to think about the environment and we have to think about our health. Wash hands for at least 20 seconds. We already covered this with your elbow. If you have to use a tissue, you know, put it in a lined trash can. You don't need to throw it in an empty trash can um, because that's gross for the person picking it up. Don't be that person, okay? Um, and then washing your hands after, you know, anything coming out of you. Okay, so One Health really is that combination between the environment, animals, and people. Okay, how many points should this next question be? Let's do for two points. Um, so we have to protect the environment and we have to reverse habitat loss. Can anybody describe to me that forest example that was reviewed in the last class? Katie? Um, so pretty much all the animals were living happy and in peace, no stress, but then the humans came, chopped down some trees, and the animals need to find a place to live so they can either stay in the small forest and fight for a place to live and food to eat, or go um, live in like cities or neighborhoods where humans are, which causes like infection, like spreads disease. Yeah, spreads to disease between what and what? Animals and humans, and humans and animals. Okay, so let's make this for four points. What's the word, or what are the words for the disease that can, or the germs that can jump between different species, including people? Baron. A zoonotic disease. Nice job. Way to go. Okay, so scientists of all different backgrounds and engineers and lots of other people can work together to make vaccines. What is that teamwork called? Darren. The One Health Approach. Way to go. Okay, what other type of people can help protect other people, animals, plants, and the environment in the future? Hint, there's no wrong answer. Katie? Everyone. <laughs> everyone, exactly, everyone. So teachers, students, parents, it doesn't matter what you do for a living, for you know how to make money. It's really how you live on this planet and how you can make sure that the environment, the area where you live in, the water stays clean, the air stays clean. Okay, so how do you think Dr. Carico would answer this question? Remember, she was, she was rejected so many times because people were not understanding, they were not seeing the importance of messenger RNA research. They were not seeing the importance of having the ability to create new proteins and what that could do for living things. Like, that is incredible. But she was determined, she did not give up. And how do you think she would answer this question? What would you say now to the people who once rejected and made fun of you? Any ideas? Let's watch. I wish to tell some of those people that who put down me and ridiculed me and whatnot <laughs> to see that, you see? But that's okay, you know. I, I am I am happy that uh, you know the two leading uh, mRNA vaccine, actually the Moderna and the BioNTech, the Pfizer product, both of them is including something that I contributed. So it makes me happy. Even other people will not know because you know Moderna usually say that they discovered everything, but they did pay for that patent. And so, what do you think of that answer? Any thoughts? You can just shout it out, it's okay. Aaron or Bima too. I think, I think it shows how humble she is. I think it shows that, um, that she recognizes 
that perseverance, that dedication paid off, even if she's not globally recognized. Okay, how do you think she would answer this question? Do you think you will win the Nobel Prize? Which is, of course, one of the highest awards for a scientist. Do you think she would? Give me a thumbs up if you think she would, or you think that she thinks she would, <laughs> or do you think thumbs down? What do you think? Or are you not sure? Yeah, okay, let's see what she says. People started to see the potential. And now they're talking about a Nobel Prize. How does that make you feel? I don't think about that I will get it. It is like I focused always on the work and that's what excites me. What do you think of that? Katie. Like you said, again, I think that shows how humble she is. She wasn't doing this for the prize. She was doing this for the people. Yeah, and that says something. That says that it's, she's not motivated by somebody else or by an external force. She's motivated because she believed in the science and she believed in herself and she believed in the research. Okay, so that ends the official lesson. Are you up for a contest? Yeah. Bima, where are we at now for the score? <clears throat> okay. So we have Ayla. She has one point. Adrina, one. And Yuki, 23. Katie, 24. And Darren is leading with point 35. Yay. So 25 or 35? Sorry, 35. It's 35, 35. It's because of those eight points questions that he that he got. That's why. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still everybody's game because some of these points are really, really, really hefty. Um, some of these questions. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to skip this uh, team naming because everybody has their own team names. Like Katie is dog, Yuki, Yuki is rabbits, and Darren is cats. So let's make this more fun. Okay. We'll unmute ourselves. And if you know the answer, oh, how is this going to be? Uh, I was going to say, say it for Darren for cats. He would go meow when he wants to answer the question. And how, what would a rabbit say? I don't know. Do you want to say like hop hop or something like that? Sure. <laughs> okay. And Katie would be what? I go bark or maybe like woof woof uh, yeah something like that and then what about fish and birds fish could be like glub 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 and a bird can be like caw, caw. okay how does that sound for everybody and that way we'll do this in real time and we'll make sure that we know exactly who answers the question first does that sound fair if it doesn't work, it won't work and we'll just change the rules, but let's just see how it goes. So we can all unmute ourselves. And Aaron, you will be the person to figure out who actually does this first. Okay, so good luck, Aaron. Question number one for three points. What is a biochemist? Woof, woof. Okay. Um. Biochemist is where like a biologist and a chemist kind of like meet together. They merge to kind of figure out the uh, what makes up a living thing, like a plant or something. Yeah. So is it one person or several people? Um, one person, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one person. Yeah. Three points can go to Katie. It's one person. That person is... Um, understanding how cells work, how, um, how a lot of different organisms work, how living things work through chemistry. Okay, next question, five points, ready? Name five people who would be involved in developing a vaccine. If you can't get five, then it'll go one point for each answer. No. Yeah. Okay, Darren, yep. Um, a veterinarian, doctor, um, person who um, specializes in environmental um, science, I guess, um, a tester, 
to like kind of like a big group of people, which would be part of a test group to test if the vaccine is working. And also, I guess, um, maybe lab workers, which um, would like uh, put together the vaccine. There you go. I got four points there. Yeah, so you're totally right. You have to have volunteers to be a part of the vaccine trials, right? And so that could be anybody. Um, why veterinarians? Why animal doctors? Um, so that for certain cases, such as uh, zoonotic diseases, um, you would kind of know like um, what type of uh, virus it is. So if it's like, um, I guess like rabies, so it, it would be coming from like certain types of animals. So um, you would know that from certain animals such as dogs, if you have a dog bite, you would know that um, one of the diseases, I guess, would be rabies. So that, um, I guess, uh, if someone's a vet, they would, um, I guess, kind of know what disease that is and how it could, I guess, like also, um, uh, like transmit to humans, and then human doctors can like collaborate together to find a solution. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. It's a good good thought process for sure. And also lab animals, right? In order to get to the point where you're developing a vaccine where you can start to uh, do human trials, you have to do animal trials first and there are veterinarians involved there. What about biochemists? What about the people who know the chemistry and can then develop vaccines from there, right? Like Dr. Carico. Okay, for two points. What is the one word to describe the One Health approach? Woof, woof. Oh, oh. I think that was Katie. Okay. Um, the, the one word, teamwork. Perfect. Next question for five points. What is the difference? Ooh, I said this very quickly today. Woof, what woof. Is, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, the antibody comes from your body, the human body, or like the animal's body, and the antigen comes from like the virus or the uh, bacteria. Nice, nice. The way I first remembered this in veterinary school, or actually when I was in much younger than that, I, I remember the antibody comes from the body, comes from the human or the animal. The antigen comes from what's called the pathogen. If you're not familiar with the word pathogen, it just means germ. Okay, so antigen comes from the pathogen or the germ. Yeah. Nice. Okay, five points for this next one. Antibodies and antigens are examples of what? That was Yuki. <laughs> nice Yuki. <laughs> hop hop, I heard. It's an example of a protein. Good. Example of a protein. Excellent. Okay. For another five points, what is the process? I want one word of making a protein. Alia? Yeah. Translation. Nice job. Yep, perfect. Translation. For three points, so this should be an easier question. Let's see how it goes. Where was Dr. Carico born? Woof, woof. Oh, I heard, I saw um, a raised hand, Adrena, before anybody else. Um, said anything. So let's go with Adrena for now. Hungry. Hungry. Yeah. Way to go. Great job. Oh, this is an eight point question because it's uh, a little bit more uh, complex. So let's go through this together. Back in November of 2020, this was on the news, breaking news. And this was talking about the trials, okay? Before the vaccine was available for the general public, this was about the trials. Um, you know, what I mean by vaccine trials with like thousands, thousands of volunteers getting the vaccine. And this is what they were trying to figure out. So out of thousands of participants, of volunteers, 95 of these participants actually got a positive result for SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. 90% were on placebo. What does placebo mean? Does anybody know? Yeah, yeah Darren? It should probably be someone, uh, so like the vaccine doesn't really contain anything. So it kind of puts a placebo effect on the person to make them feel like, oh, I actually got the vaccine. Or like have a fake effect on them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So a placebo means um, the participant the volunteer thinks that they got 
um, you know, a, a real vaccine, something that that's tangible, like, something that will make a difference. But in reality, there is no difference. Uh, like there is no, there's nothing helpful in the injection to see, uh, to uh, fight or strengthen the immune system. So that's what the placebo means. And then, so five people who got the real vaccine um, caught COVID-19, 90 on the placebo um, got COVID-19. So my question to you, and this is why it's eight points, is how can this happen? How can 95 participants out of thousands of participants get COVID? It's okay to guess. You're not going to be- uh, um, I have a question. Yes, please, Katie. So 95 of the participants in the stock got COVID. 90 on placebo, five, okay. I think um, it happened because people thought they were vaccinated. So they were like, I'm just gonna go do whatever I want. I'm gonna go to places without a mask on. I'm gonna like not wash my hands as often. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Because what are the two steps for really getting sick with this virus? The two steps is number one, it has to enter your body. So that's where the masks and the hand washing comes in, right? Step number two is it has to enter into a cell in your body. So there are two steps and the vaccine is supposed to try to prevent it from getting into the cells, but you have to make sure that you have the masks. You have to make sure you're not touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Okay, great job. So eight points goes to Katie. Question number nine, this is two parts. Can a vaccine alone end the pandemic and explain your answer? I saw Adrena's hand first, so let's go with Adrena first. No. No? Okay. Um, then that means Erin, who was the... I think she was answering the question, the first one. Oh, it was no. Okay, yes, you are correct. <laughs> Please explain your answer. Because vaccine, vaccine doesn't prevent the virus to get into our body, we have to do anything else to prevent the virus to get into our body, like washing hand, wearing mask. Way to go. Awesome. Six points to you. Okay, 10 points. Yeah, yeah, this is a biggie. And keep in mind, this could totally get somebody to first place. How can the One Health approach help prevent a pandemic? Well, well, Ooh, I, ooh, Aaron, I don't know. Was Adrena's hand up first before I heard the woof woof? I don't know. You help me out. I think so. I saw her hand shoot up first. Okay. Your, your, your show, <laughs> Adrena, go for it. Because the, because there is the work of people from different jobs. Okay. Give me a little more. It's 10 points, so I need more, I need more of that. So you said people from different jobs coming together, but like, what, what would they do to prevent a pandemic? Okay, let's go six points for Adrena. Who wants to help out? Wolf, wolf. Okay, Katie? Um. If um, all different specialists came together, um, they could work together to find new viruses and prevent them from being spread to humans or the other way around. And yeah, like that. Yeah, it could be viruses, it could be bacteria. Because yeah. some bacteria in, this, in the world are starting to become um, resistant as in they don't, they don't um, die uh, with certain antibiotics. And that's a big problem. That's a big problem. So a lot of people need to come together to address this. Okay, this is the bonus point. It's 15 points. It's a massive question. Ready for it? What can you do this week to promote One Health efforts in your community? Yeah. <laughs> 
Darren. Um, I guess one thing what you could do is um, perhaps like teaching other people about what we kind of learned today. So um, I guess like uh, talking about like um, maybe like to your parents or to your friends about what we learned today in the lesson. So maybe some interesting facts about um, how the mRNA vaccine would work and also um, like the One Health approach and the One Health concept. Nice. Darren, how does the, how does the mRNA vaccine work? Oh, the mRNA vaccine works by um, uh, play, um, play, placing, uh, I think like um, mRNA, uh, mRNA into your body so that it would, um, which would simulate uh, the spikes in the um, yeah, the spikes in the uh, COVID-19 virus so that your body would know what to do when they actually contract the disease. Nice. Yeah, the spike protein. Great. Um, okay, 15 points go to him. Let's have somebody else get it for 13 points. Any other ideas for 13 points? No, wait. No run. Ooh. 13 points up for grabs. Any other ideas? I'll give you 10 seconds. Otherwise, 13 points disappears. Okay, so here are some answers that I was able to think up, but you can totally think of other things too. So like Darren said, teach friends and families what you learned. How about having a community project? How about having your teacher or your friends or create a club about One Health and find a way to show people that everything is related to each other, you know? How about making, uh, I don't know, going on social media, if your parents allow it, of course, and making a video about this, um, explain how vaccines work or, you know, things like that. And if you do that, then One Health Lessons is on all different social media sites. So you can tag us. Um, we do have contests. Um, and there are these global contests that have to do with arts and music um, and sometimes essays and sometimes um, and sometimes other, other type of fun live contests and competitions that exist with One Health Lessons. Um, you can create connections with another classroom across the world. And if you're interested in that, then let us know at One Health Lessons. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if you know this or not, but November 3rd is International One Health Day. So you could do something special with your school, with your class. And throughout the month of January is One Health Awareness Month. So think about what you can do to get more people aware and uh, <clears throat> aware of One Health and have a One Health mindset. Congratulations, Bima. Let's hear the winners. And we'll have to have a drum roll. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so the drum roll is an imagination thing. Uh, we have, uh, can you hear me, Dr. Thompson? Yeah, we can hear you, Bima. Okay, I just that the video is lagging. Anyways, um, so we have Alia, it's six point, um, Adrina, 16, Yuki, 28, and um, the winner is Darren with 54 points, and Katie, she got 46 points. Congratulations, everyone. Wow, I can't believe already in the 50s and the 40s, that's incredible. Well done, everybody. If you have any questions, um, either about uh, being a veterinarian or being um, doing your um, bachelor's degree, like what Aaron is doing, or any other questions about the vaccine, or any other questions about biology in general or science in general. It's OK if you don't. We're just here for you if you do have questions. Okay, awesome. Well, well done, everybody. Congratulations. This was a lot of fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. I hope you were able to learn some things. And I'll see you all next time. Onwards and upwards, everybody. Thank you.